Hi, my name is Richard Lyle, and today you're going to watch me do a little study of a cedar tree on Escalante Flat in Utah. I find these cedar trees very interesting and a good subject. I also feel that every artist should do studies. You can't always paint a masterpiece. If you keep trying to paint a masterpiece, you never will paint a masterpiece. You have to take chances. If you're an artist and you find yourself at a plateau and your paintings, you just can't seem to get off the plateau. You can't keep improving yourself. It's probably because you're trying to paint a masterpiece all the time. You have to take chances. You have to do studies. You have to learn. You learn from your mistakes. Here's a photo of the cedar tree on the flats in Escalante that I used for my study. Now with the study, you use the same process that if I was painting outside doing a painting. I start with my transfer to the canvas. Then I do my underpainting, which in this case is a reverse color. So all the blues are oranges, the reds are green, and the violets are yellow. Now I start blocking in the local color into the large shapes and start the foundation of the painting. Now you can see, I do this very quickly and I just block in the big shapes. I try to cover as much as the canvas as possible. It's not important that I match the colors exactly. Now that I got all the colors blocked in, I start to refine the painting. I do this by modeling the whole painting. I keep jumping around, defining the painting in different areas. I don't let my eyes sit in one place for very long. As you can see here, I'm dividing it up and separating the painting. This isn't going to look like that at all when I'm done. It's just put there so I know what's going to be there. Now I'm refining the tree more, giving it more darker and light values. Darkers are accents and lights are called highlights. Now a lot of times when I'll do when I'm jumping around the paint like that, I'll keep certain brushes for certain areas. So when I'm done with this tree, I'll probably put that brush down and pick up a different brush with a different color and start working some other area in the painting. Here I am refining the mountains more. Notice how the mountains get, get lighter and cooler in the distance. Now I'm starting to work on the sky. Now the clouds that are closest to you are the ones almost straight ahead. The atmosphere is very thin. Those mountains are probably 10 miles away. 
but the clouds are less than a mile away straight ahead. White gets warmer as it goes in the distance. All the colors get cooler in the distance. I'm putting the shadows in for the trees in the background. Now if you look at the shadow in the tree in the front, you'll see that it's very warm at the base of the tree and gets cooler as it moves away. There's a lot of red in the base of that tree. Now that I'm working on the grass, you can see how I jump all around. I mix colors and I say, oh, looks like it goes here. You don't want to paint the grass like a golf course. There's all these different colors. That's the beauty of nature. Here I am putting in the tree uh, the yellow flowers. I use a bigger brush and, and very little paint on it and I dry brush them in. There's no magic brush stroke. Everybody thinks that you need an art lesson that, that you're going to be taught this magic brush stroke that's going to make you a master. It doesn't work that way. You have to learn if it's a good instructor, he's going to teach you what you see. You have to know what's happening in the atmosphere. You have to know what the colors are doing. That's what makes a good artist. Not some magic brush or keeping the art stores in business by having a million different brushes. A brush for this and a brush for that. I don't feel it works that way. And if you really look at these artists that use these magic brushes, like, oh, this brush gives me a tree, and this brush gives me grass and all, if you really look at it, it doesn't look like it. He tells you it looks like it. But when you look up close, you go, that's not what I see out there. The one thing that's important about a brush is that the bristles don't fall out. If you buy a brand brush and the bristles start to fall out, throw it away. And maybe don't buy that brand anymore if you didn't have the brush very long. You don't have to pay a lot of money for brushes. I know I don't want a $75 brush in my easel. They fall out. I lose them. I buy cheaper brushes that I have experience with that I know the bristles don't fall out.
Well, that's it. That's the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Or give me thumbs up if you liked the video. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye.